Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons and uh, Indian Orthopedic Association Conference on Pelvic and Acetabular Fractures. Uh, my name is Frank Liberace and I come to you from uh, New York, New York, USA, um, accompanied by my friend and colleague uh, Corey Collins from Fort Worth, Texas, USA. And it's an honor to be invited here to participate in your program. Um, I had the good fortune last year of coming to your great country and having the opportunity to tour five different cities in another combined effort with the AALS, but it was not as specific for solely pelvic and acetabular fractures. We cover many fractures above of the upper and lower extremity at that form, but I think for those of us that are here, we all realize we have a special place in our heart for the pelvis and acetabulum. So it's a pleasure to see a number of people with interest, and I understand that a number of people registered, and we're probably just a little early in the day thus far. Um, so we would like to thank IACON for this collaboration. This means quite a bit to us. And it's pretty evident on the participation your society and its members have had with the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Currently, there are 150 um, members from uh, India that are in the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. And that is uh, quite, quite impressive, and we're very proud of that. And we're honored to have approximately 80 of your faculty a year come and visit us to our national meeting and hope this grows over time. Uh, because this partnership, friendship, and cooperation really, I think, is not only pleasant, but is very educational to, on both sides to how we treat patients. There are certain um, pathologies and injuries that uh, we see that are less common in your culture, and certainly there are many in your culture that are less common in ours that we have a great deal to learn from you. So it's a very exciting time. And we've really made the effort as our society over the past uh, 10 plus years on being involved on multiple forefronts internationally because we really think at this day and age that um, things are much more global, not so local. So we introduced ourselves already. You'll, you'll see plenty of us over the next two days. So please, um, you know, this is a very interactive course. If you'll notice during the program for each topic, a fair amount of time is given for each topic to be discussed and lectured upon. There is time dialed in for question and answers, as well for you if you have cases and would like to uh, present or discuss them, your experiences, to be involved in what our experiences are as well. So we really would like to take advantage of each other's knowledge and experience. <clears throat> Uh, also, there will be a certificate of attendance granted at the end of the program, so please fill out your uh, evaluations because as we continue our relationship, this is the third year the AOS has been involved with uh, coming over to India and being involved in presentations on different topics and events, and um, this collaboration has been growing, and we can learn how to make it better for you um, if we have positive feedback and also negative feedback on what we could do better. And we would like to encourage all of you to become international members to the AOS. This is a free access educational opportunity. Um, and you can find uh, membership um, uh, qualifications on AOS.org. And so we encourage you to please be involved. Our next meeting will be in uh, March, March 11 through March 15 in New Orleans, Louisiana. We encourage all of you to come. And uh, it is a very fun city. There are quite a few educational forms that will be presented in all orthopedic subspecialties. And um, we do things a little in reverse from what you're doing. My understanding is the specialty day for the detailed topics like pelvic and acetabular surgeries at the beginning of your meeting. And I think that's wonderful. And I, I want to bring that home and encourage our members to do the same because our specialty day is at the end of our meeting. It's the last day. Many people by then are quite tired. so. Um, I really uh, appreciate uh, the way your things are organized. So please contact uh, us and see how to become involved and, and join through free membership at uh, international at AOS.org. We look forward to seeing you in New Orleans and spending the next two days with you and sharing ideas. Thank you for your attention. And we are going to start our first lecture with uh, the esteemed Dr. Magu, and he's going to talk to us about anatomy and classification of pelvic and acetabular fractures. And on um, a cursory note, this seems like it is a fairly basic lecture if you just look at the title, but if you treat pelvic and acetabular fractures on a regular basis, this will probably be the most important lecture of the next two days for the ability to truly understand, to diagnose, 
and to come up with a plan on how to take care of these injuries because these are quite challenging and uh, this is the most important part for any pelvic and acetabular surgeon. So please, I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Magu for his words of wisdom. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Thank you, Frank, and good morning, friends. It's a very important subject to talk on anatomy and classification because this gives you the basic knowledge how to diagnose and classify fracture and then manage it in a proper way. So we shall be talking of normal anatomy and before you classify it, little bit of knowledge of radiology is important. that how these bony landmarks and bony masses reflect on various views. The AP view, the optator view, oblique leg view, inlet and outlet view, there's essential five radiological views to diagnose a pelvis, pelvis tabular injury. And we all know that pelvis is a ring structure comprising both of bones as well as of ligaments, very strong ligaments. It transmits weight. It contains, supports and protects pelvic viscera and gives attachment to the muscles of the lower limb and of the trunk. The two innominate bones, they join anteriorly at the pubic symphysis and articulate posteriorly with the sacrum at the sacroiliac joint. So these are some bony prominences, anterior superior iliac spine, anterior inferior iliac spine, ischial tuberosity, pubic tubercle, here the strong muscles are there. And the violent contraction of these muscles can cause evolution of these bony prominences which may be causing disability to the patients, particularly the sports persons. So this ring structure, which is osseous, is supported with strong ligaments. Anteriorly, there is fibrocartilaginous disc at the pubic symphysis and superiorly, there is superior pubic ligament and there is arcuate pubic ligament inferiorly. And posteriorly, the stability comes from the posterior weight bearing complex, which comprises of sacroiliac joint, the sacroiliac ligaments, which is interior, interosseous, and the posterior. So, this posterior weight bearing complex is very important in providing stability to this pelvic girdle and maintaining its integrity. Now, this two ligaments, sacrospinous and sacrotuberous. This is the sacrotuberous ligaments coming from the lateral side of the sacrum and the coccyx and then going on the ischial tuberosity and the sacrospinous ligament. And the sacroiliac ligaments, sac SI joint, these four things from the posterior weight bearing complex. The sacrospinous ligament, this resist force is in external rotation. And sacrotuberous ligament, this resist force is in sagittal plane. So here again a very strong ligament, the iliolumbar ligament with this yellow arrow. Here this is attached on the transverse process number 5. If you find a fracture of the transverse process, that means this is unstable because the shearing forces, this hemipelvis has gone up. So this ligament gives stability in coronal plane. This too is a very important ligament from the surgical anatomy point of view of this pelvic girdle. This iliac bone is sandwiched between the iliacus muscle on the inside and glutei on the outside. Therefore, these muscles, they provide good splintage to the iliac bone and this can be treated conservatively when it is isolated except when it is, when the fracture is angulated at an acute angle that dangers the violation of the soft tissue only then one should go for surgical intervention otherwise there is a good splintage because of the iliacus muscle on the medial side and gluteal on the outer side and you must remember 
this plexus and the nerve roots, lumbar fibers one, that pass in front of the ala of the sacrum. We find here this, this nerve root is under traction because of this abdominal bone only one when the lycus and the abdominal muscles are being retracted. So you have to be careful when you are going to stabilize the sacroiliac joint and when you are going to lift the tissue from the ala of the sacrum, you should take the nerve with the soft tissues and no kind of traction should be there on this nerve, otherwise foot drop can be there. Here I was just showing to Frankel that when I opened this fracture through the anterior approach, iliofemoral approach, I found that this nerve is trapped on the spike of this bone fragment. That is the danger I want to caution you through this approach as well as this vital tissue which is in intimate contact with the ala. So you have to be careful when you are operating such patients and stabilizing the sacroiliac joint region. So here I did the osteotomy, I just showed him. Again, few important vital tissues like nerves and vessels are in intimate contact with the pelvic girdle anteriorly and posteriorly. This is the fossa region, iliopectin eminence, psoas fossa, here we find the psoas muscle. Anterior to this is the femoral nerve, medial to this is middle window, which have the femoral vessels, and still medial this spermatic cord. And posteriorly, you find the sciatic nerve, which is at the inferior border of the piriformis muscle. Here you find piriformis muscle, and that's the inferior border. So you have to be careful when you are operating upon the acetabulum through the Cocker's approach. You handle the nerve with your hands. And there may be injury to the spirogotor artery. You have to be careful about it. This is the vascularity of the lac bone, very important vessels. And of all, this is the optic artery and the spirogotor artery. Now in this patient, you find that this is the region of the greater sciatic notch. You find hematoma with the callus formation. I operated this patient after 18 days and there was massive bleeding because the superior gutter artery was injured. So you have to be careful in this region while you are doing soft tissue dissection and lifting the muscles or the soft tissue from the bone in the region of the greater sciatic notch. And if such a complication you come across, the answer is packing. So you must be aware that there is some artery in the region of the posterior column, on the posterior aspect, when you're operating through the Cocker's approach, and that is again a vital part which may result in massive hemorrhage, besides corona mortis, which you find on the anterior side. You must remember that bladder is suprapubic up to six years of age in children, and when it is full because of the elasticity in an anterior compression injury, in a violent type of injuries there, the bladder can be injured because this is suprapubic in children up to six years of age. After that involutes, and still in anterior posterior compression type of injuries, you can come across, or vertical chain type of injuries, you can come across injury to the bladder, bladder neck, and membranous part of the urethra. Now this is just a sign which is very good like presentation. This again is sign because of injury to the membranous part of the urethra. The three bones, the ilium, ischium and the pubis, they form the socket of the hip joint. It's called as acetabulum. So acetabulum is not just a cavity but in fact it is a solid mass of bone with a cavity within it. So reconstruction means that you have to reconstruct the columns and you do the reconstruction of this cavity indirectly. So this is a cavity within a solid bony mass of two columns, anterior column and a posterior column. This is the anterior column, blue colored, and that's the posterior column. And these two columns, they join this auricular surface of the iliac bone at a very thick condensation of the bones and this part is called as sciatic buttress. It is a very strong part of the bone. It rarely fractures and this is a good platform to anchor your screws and plate when you are going to stabilize a posterior column or stabilizing the sacroiliac joint through the anterior approach. 
So this is the shatic buttress, this is the anterior column on the two sides and that's the posterior column and this condensation of various trabeculae gives strength to the shatic buttress. Here because of the thickness and solid mass of bone you can anchor your inferior plate when you stabilize the sacro like joint. From here about 3 cm anterior to the sacro like joint close to the brain 1 cm lateral to it you can stabilize the posterior column when you open the fracture say a transverse fracture from the ileum gonal approach or the iliofemoral approach that again is a good chunk of bone it's quite strong bone compact bone and you can insert your interfragmentary screw to stabilize the two columns that's the posterior column again it's a good bony mass to stabilize the posterior wall or a transverse fracture or a t-shirt fracture with this reconstruction plate the ischial tuberosity is a good solid mass of bone and above it is a furrow and you can know the relationship of ischial spine and the, this sacrospinous ligament and all those things you can know where is the anterior horn where is the posterior horn of the two vertebral surface of the stabulum and this surgical anatomy again is very important to prevent injury to any vital organ or nerve vessel so you can use this mass as a indirect traction mass using the shan screw or the bone hook and you can reduce a column fracture by the posterior column or a transverse fracture you can insert two screws in these solid bony masses and use your paleo forceps in a neglected fracture to reduce it indirectly.